Star-nosed moles are one of the most distinctive types of mammal. Their noses are hairless and ringed by a unique star of 22 pink, fleshy tentacles. The star has 11 appendages per side that vary in length from 1 to 4 mm. This species ranges from 175 to 205 mm in total length and weighs between 35 and 75 grams. Like other moles it has a stout, roughly cylindrical body with heavily built forelimbs, broad feet, and large claws. Its hair is short, dense, and coarser than that of other moles. The pelage is dark brown to black on the back and lighter brown underneath. During winter the tail swells three to four times its normal diameter. In this video I will share with you seven amazing fun facts about star-nosed moles. Before we begin we published new videos daily. So be sure to subscribe this channel for the great content. Without delay let's start. Star-nosed moles are one of the most distinctive types of mammal. Their noses are hairless and ringed by a unique star of 22 pink, fleshy tentacles. The star has 11 appendages per side that vary in length from 1 to 4 mm. This species ranges from 175 to 205 mm in total length and weighs between 35 and 75 grams. Like other moles it has a stout, roughly cylindrical body with heavily built forelimbs, broad feet, and large claws. Its hair is short, dense, and coarser than that of other moles. The pelage is dark brown to black on the back and lighter brown underneath. During winter the tail swells three to four times its normal diameter. Star-nosed moles appear to have only one mate each breeding season. Males and females are thought to pair up as early as autumn and remain together through the mating season in March and April. Little is known about how the star-nosed mole finds or attracts a mate. Star-nosed moles mate in the spring from about mid-March through April. Pregnancy lasts approximately 45 days, and young are born in late April through mid-June. Females produce one litter of offspring per year of between two and seven young, though five is a typical litter size. Not much is known about the lifespan of Condylura cristata in the wild. Since a female's reproductive effort is limited to only one litter per year, it is speculated that C. cristata may have a relatively long lifespan for a mammal of its size, perhaps three to four years. Some star-nosed moles have lived two years in captivity. The star is used in a number of different activities. When C. cristata is burrowing, the tentacles are held forward over the nostrils to prevent soil from entering the nose. This behavior also occurs while consuming prey. During normal foraging activity, the tentacles are constantly being used to feel the mole's surroundings, moving so rapidly that they appear as a blur of motion, touching as many as 12 objects per second. Using these supersensitive organs, identification of prey can be made in under half a second. The home range of an individual star-nosed mole is thought to be less than 4,000 square meters. Condylura cristata is more social than other moles in eastern North America and is believed to form small, loose colonies of related individuals. It is not known if more than one mole will share a network of tunnels, other than paired males and females during the breeding season. In favorable habitat, the density of moles may be as great as 75 per hectare, though 25 or fewer per hectare is more common. The eyes of C. cristata may only be useful for sensing light and dark. Its hearing seems to be excellent, however. Its sense of smell is probably also fairly well developed. Young star-nosed moles make some high-pitched calls and adults are known to make wheezing sounds. There is little information available on how individuals communicate with each other. When it has access to a body of water, However, C. cristata prefers to hunt aquatic prey. About half of its diet consists of worms, Anelida, 
and 80% of these are aquatic species such as leeches. Aquatic insects make up another 30% of its diet, including the larvae of caddisfleas, Trichoptera, midges, Chironomidae, dragonflies, and damselflies, Odonata, crane flies, Tipulidae, horseflies, Tabanidae, predaceous diving beetles, Didicithi, and stoneflies, Plecoptera. Condylura cristata will also take occasional terrestrial insects, aquatic crustaceans, mollusks, and small fish. Please hit like and subscribe our channel for more amazing content in the future.